Okay, here I'm going to be explaining the triangulation method, how it relates typically to crime scenes, and particularly to sketches and documentation of where things might be located. Some of the information I got was from uh, Ashlyn uh, Pearson at the website found here at SlideShare. So starting with triangulation method, let's look at what is this about. Well, first off, in order to triangulate anything, we need to have fixed points. We have areas of reference or to measure off of. Now, there's no set saying that what has to be a fixed point, but typically we're using the larger objects. These fixed points act as accurate measurements um, that must be recorded so that the scale of the finalized sketch can be prepared for court presentation. So we have these fixed points, and that's what's allowing us to establish uh, this area and act as points that we can then measure off of and from. So looking at the triangulation method of locating evidence. Well here in item A uh, is 10 feet in the southeast corner of the room and 8 feet from the southwest corner of the room. So north is um, this way. Uh, these measurements will always intersect at point A's location. So now what we're looking at and going through triangulation without a fixed address. So now how we triangulate for part A here. So evidence must be triangulated uh, with two fixed points. How would object A be triangulated? Not from using the corners of the room. So we have our desk here. Now we're looking at triangulation without that fixed point. So the desk is not fixed since it's not touching the walls located and has not been determined. So the desk needs to be fixed in space. We have to measure that to start. Here it is, one inch from, the, from this wall and three feet from this wall. Providing measurements, the desk is not fixed in space. Now object A can be fixed to the two fixed points of the desk. Now we've established where that desk is. Now we can measure from there. So object A can now be fixed from the two fixed points from the desk uh, as depicted in the above sketch, five feet from here and six feet from here. Now we've established where that desk is located. Now progressing to object flush to the wall. How would object A be triangulated with the desk that's flush to the wall? Well, because it's flush to the wall, we don't have to measure behind it. We can measure its distance from this wall, and we can now take our two fixed points from the corner. One measurement is required to place the desk along the wall. Uh, this is flush with the wall, making it fixed, and then the object is triangulated as usual. Uh, how would it, it was flush um, to both walls? If it was stuffed in the corner, how do we do that? Well, we don't have to establish the desk at all. We can just measure from those corners of that desk to get the triangulation where point A is located. Once evidence is triangulated, it can be a fixed point to triangulate other items from. So if evidence A was here to evidence B, we can work also from that fixed point to this fixed point, in this case, object B. So the rectangular uh, coordinate method, where we see here, um, nice kind of coordinating things where object A and B might be located. It's another great way at right angles, um, to, again, from the wall and distance from the wall. Center of mass. So how does this refer to? Well, a lot of times we're dealing with blood splatter or some other forms of liquids. How are we dealing with that? Or how are we going to measure those? We're going to measure each three of those in this case. When I get a couple more, well, we're going to measure to what's called the center of mass. So since blood droplets are no uh, particular defined shape, they are trained from the center of mass. What does that mean? Well, this is our blood splatter. We're kind of estimating the center to be right there, and that's what we're triangulating from. Not any one particular droplet, but from the center of that mass there. And last, we have a projection sketch. So we see all the data that's included, all the details, all the triangulation that's included, uh, the legend of what the letters correlate and where north is located. Uh, it's not the scale, or you could say that a quarter inch equals a foot, whatever fits the conditions here. Um, but we can see the level of detail that's needed in the sketch. And many times, triangulations are tra the triangulation method <laughs> is used to denote, for example, where the bullet hole is in relation to the walls um, to get an idea where that's located to be used and um, shown in courtroom settings.